DaVinci Resolve is a super powerful editor and thanks to its many features and improvements that it gets with every update, you actually don't need many plugins for it. At least not as many as for Final Cut. However, there are still some plugins that give you options that you would otherwise not have or that would simply take too much time to edit by yourself. So in this video I'll show you my favorite plugins and how to use them and I will also give you some tips on how to use them better. So let's directly start with my first two plugins and by the way I will link all of those plugins in the description below so if one sounds interesting for you, you will find that there directly, you don't extra have to google for it. And the first two are for making my transitions, you know in some of my videos I like to use a lot of zoom and seamless transitions, slide transitions etc. And here in DaVinci Resolve I do that a lot with the plugins M Transition Fade and M Transition Zoom for Motion VFX. You find them here on the left side, let's say M transition zoom here and then if I want to use that let's say swap vertical then I could use that here for example now it's getting down that doesn't look good so I click on that transition and then I click on flip direction and now you see we have a camera movement up into the next shot. I always make my transitions look as smooth as possible and for that I also have a few tips here for you. For example here I have one clip where I can do a speed ramp at the end of the clip but then on the next clip that I want to do I can't do speed ramping there so you can see that here when I ad activate the speed editor you see there's a speed ramp at the end Shoop. but then the next clip is just steady relatively steady so it doesn't look smooth so here I can actually lift up that clip and then I can apply swing horizontal for example and then that swing horizontal transition only gets applied to the second clip and as you can see now okay that didn't look good because I didn't have flip direction activated so let's activate that and now you can see that looks pretty smooth and kind of seamless actually. So this is a nice tip on how to use these transitions only on one clip. You can also make your timeline look a bit better than by putting that into a compound clip then reducing the compound clip and put it down and now you see we have this exact same transition nothing has changed but the timeline is clean again aside from that i also want to show you another example here for smooth transitions because when it comes to transitions it's very important that a you don't use them too much otherwise they just don't work anymore and B, you have to use them in the right way. If you use them wrong, if you use them randomly in your videos, they never come good. So here's an example where I used a lot of transitions just over a bunch of clips, but it's done in a good way. So the first transition here is to the left, but they also had a little bit of camera motion to the left in reality. So let's see that. So motion to the left. There I use the transition on the second clip then. And now in the second one, I use a zoom transition. This is the zoom custom here. I can show you that in a moment, but in a zoom custom transition, you can define your midpoint. But let me show you the transition first. So here I zoom into that boat and there is this guy sitting there. And now why this transition works, even if it's two kind of different clips is that I have a person sitting on a boat. So you see, I lined up this people so that I perfectly zoom towards that person and despite it being another boat and he having a sunshade on top it still works because there's a person in the middle and I have that zoom there and then when I go further I zoom back again and because it's a, it's a boat with a roof which is a bit similar to the sunshade in that case and I also lined up the boats the transition also works here even if it's not exactly the same in the middle so if I go through that whole sequence again whoop, bam and out again and you see there we are already driving on the boat so this is how you can use them in a good way you always want to look for objects that are the same or at least very similar in your shots at least for zoom transitions and if you do slide transitions then you always want to match camera movement otherwise it looks kind of weird and that is also the reason why such transitions always work good together with speed ramps and to also show you the M transition fade plugin it's actually quite similar it's also slide transitions basically also zoom but always with a shade in between. So for example, if I use this transition here again that we already had before and I apply the effect M transition fade slide right here, or not the effect, the transition to it, then you see that suddenly this black shade 
comes in the shot. So these transitions work really good, especially for shots that are a bit darker, where it would just feel natural to move the camera between behind something dark. So these are great transitions that I also really love. I also used them in Final Cut before actually. And that's a nice thing about Motion VFX. They have their plugins, actually the same plugins available for Final Cut, sometimes even Premiere Pro and also DaVinci Resolve. So if you're coming from Final Cut, you will already find some plugins that you used before available for DaVinci Resolve. So you don't have to search all the internet for similar plugins. And let's come to our next two plugins, which are also from Motion VFX, but this time these are titles. And the plugins that I'm talking about here are MTuber 2 and MTuber 3. And they have all sorts of titles there and overlays, logo animations and stuff that you can use to make your YouTube channel better. To be honest, I use only a few of those titles, but therefore I really like them. For example, here, when I want to tell you in the video what soundtrack I use from Epidemic Sound right now, then I use this title MTuber 3 Typography 5 here from Motion VFX and then you can see it slides in here, music by Epidemic Sound and you see the title in there directly. And from those two plugins what I also like to use a lot is that like overlay here. That is also from MTuber 3 so you can see here MTuber 3 call to action 3. That's then my like animation. And I love that I can only drag them in there basically and I already have everything there that I need to get my like and subscribe elements. But there is something that I did with those elements as you already see in my timeline because these are not titles anymore here, these are videos. And another animation that I use a lot from those plugins, actually MTuber 2 here is the subscribe animation which I put in all of my videos. I just like it, it's super attention grabbing and I don't have to tell you all the time again to subscribe. I think it's like a waste of time so I would rather use an overlay for that. And now here for a few tips on how to use those plugins. At first you have these power bins here available in DaVinci Resolve and you can actually drag really everything into such a power bin. So for example here I have my titles folder and when we look at this epidemic sound animation here for example I have my styling here, I have my background set up, my font, my colors etc. So I don't want to redo that all the time again. So what you can simply do after doing that the first time is to drag that into your power bin here under titles what I've created and then I have that in there and I can always just drag that back into the timeline then I have that and that works for all of your projects like if you start a new project these files are always there and what you can also do for titles where you don't want to change the text or any other stuff is that you save that as ProRes 444 files then you can also drag that into a power bin so here for example this is what I did with my like animation and also the subscribe one I created created an empty timeline where I only inserted this effect, I did all my styling, I added sound effects to it, like you can hear that here when I turn my sound on. So I did some sound designing there as well and then from there you simply export that empty timeline on the export page in the ProRes 42HQ tab and there you change ProRes 42HQ to 444 and you turn export alpha on and then all that stuff that is usually black behind that animation becomes transparent, basically like a PNG file. And so if you render it like that, you can also simply drag that into your power bins here. Like here you see I have that like.mov. Oh, I didn't do it, okay. So here you see like.mov and then I already have my sound effects. Here I have the styling perfect. So that's a tip that can save you a lot of time, but to show you a bit more of these plugins here, they have a lot more functionalities like MTuber 2 and MTuber 3. These are not just titles, they also come with effects. For example, when I look here, you have like for your end screens, for example, you have latest videos, you have playlists here, you have a magnifying glass included in MTuber 2 for tutorials, for example, if you want to emphasize something. And another plugin that I also find quite nice that just came out recently from Motion VFX is this M Collage plugin here, as you can see, has all these nice photo film frames. If you use photos in your videos, it just looks a little bit nice and you also have lots of options there, animation options that you can drag over and stuff like it's really cool so check that out as well if that's interesting for you. But let's now come to two other plugins that are there for color grading. When it comes to color grading you already have a lot of options in DaVinci Resolve. You don't necessarily need plugins to get a great look in this app 
but these plugins are great if you want to have that film look or if you want to color match different cameras quickly. So let me show you in the color page how those plugins work. So let's start with Film Convert and what I do here is I simply drag that in there. This was shot on the Fujifilm X-H2S. So here in the camera settings I can quickly choose Fujifilm X-H2S F-Log2 because that's what I shot in. I reduce the grain because I, I don't really like film grain so I don't use that here. Then I see it has a little bit too much magenta in there so I drag the tint slider a bit to the left to make it a bit more greenish looking and also want to have it a bit warmer maybe a little bit more magenta again and I drag the saturation up and there as you can see just within a few seconds I was able to make the video look like it was shot on a film stock in that case here Kodak 5207 Vis 3 but they also come with lots of other film stocks for example you have Fujifilm VD here Eterna from Fujifilm, you have Astia here from Fujifilm. If you scroll down, what I also like a lot is Kodak P400 Portra. It actually looks really nice on that image here. And they also have a few for black and white. If you want to make black and white videos that look a bit more like film color, you can also do that here. So Film Convert is a plugin that helps you a lot to quickly achieve that film look. And because they use their camera matching engine here, it's also quite easy via those camera settings to match the footage from different cameras. So let's say you have your main camera, Canon or Sony or whatever, and you want to match that footage quickly with your drone, let's say a DJI Air 2S, then you can quickly apply film convert here choose Canon or Sony or whatever and your camera model and the picture profile you shot in and then on your DJI clip you would choose DJI Air 2S D-Log and then it would also transfer that into film color and it should, should look very similar at least if you drag the sliders around here to match the white balance etc. So that's how film convert works and from my experience film convert works the best with cameras that have a lot of dynamic range because film color just needs a lot of dynamic range to look Look good. So if you use it with a lower dynamic range camera, your shadows can sometimes be a bit too dark, which is not a big issue. You can use that film response curve here, for example, to make your shadows brighter, or you can reduce the Cineon to print film slider. Then you also see that it's a bit less contrasty, what makes your shadows brighter essentially. So you have options there, but it makes it a little bit more complicated. And that is why I also oftentimes like to use a plugin called Cinematch, because Cinematch essentially does two things. You can at first use Cinematch to emulate the look of other cameras and you can also use Cinematch to match different cameras better so similar to Film Convert but it gives you a bit more options for camera matching. So what I like to use Cinematch for is to emulate Arri Alexa cameras which are used in Hollywood productions etc like all that ultra professional stuff. So if you don't want this film look but you want to go more for a modern cinema camera look then it can actually make sense to get Cinematch instead of Film Convert. So let me show you how that works. It's actually quite Quite similar at first I choose my camera model in that case Canon R5 in Cinema Gamut C look 3 and then I choose the camera target profile and in that case that's Arri Alexa Mini Log C is only this camera available from Arri so I apply that and then I apply Rec 709 transform as you can see instantly I also get pretty good looking image but it doesn't have this typical film look it's more like a more modern cinema camera and not even that it's more designed to give us a very good starting point like accurate colors rich colors like you see the greens for example they all look quite natural here just slightly overexposed so I drag the exposure slider now a little bit to the left to make it darker and then I can also give it my own film curve here by using those RGB curves. So for example, if I want a bit more contrast, I can just create a nice S curve here. Probably want to bring the exposure a bit up then again because the shadows otherwise are a bit too dark. So as you can see, Cinematch is more there to give you a good starting point, in that case a nice Arri Alexa starting point, but it doesn't have this ultra stylized look that Film Convert gives you directly. That is why Cinematch is actually great for your lock conversion to match cameras quickly, and then from there you can take it further by color grading it to your liking. Like here for example, I would probably reduce the saturation of the greens a little bit with the HSL curves and make them a bit darker to give it more of a moody look. And 
make him stand out a little bit better with the red jacket, but it's just one example here. So overall, Film Convert is really good if you want that film look quickly in DaVinci Resolve, and Cinematch is great if you want to have a good starting point for your color grading and you want to match cameras easily. So that are my favorite plugins for DaVinci Resolve and the ones that I use the most right now, at least in 2022, maybe that changes over 2023, depending on what new plugins come out. And aside from that, if you want to know more on how to color grade fast in DaVinci Resolve, check out this video here in this corner. Actually, I'm sitting on the other side now. I usually point to the other side. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, if it helped you a little bit, please leave me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. See you in the next one.